Hey everybody, welcome back to Sugar Shane's Sweet Life. Uh, today's episode is part two of uh, painting a portrait of Dennis Rodman. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen my last video, if you're just tuning in for the first time, you know, go check out my previous video um, and you'll see that I painted a, a, a portrait of Dennis Rodman. And, you know, today's episode, I'm painting my third painting. I'll show you guys my uh, first painting that I did of Dennis Rodman. Uh, there's three in all. So I'll show you my first one later on. I still have to get that out of my storage. You know, it's packed away with my other paintings. And yeah, so today's episode, I'm going to be painting another picture of Dennis Rodman. Um, and if you... If, if you haven't seen my, my previous video, I was telling everybody to go check out his 30 for 30 documentary that was on ESPN uh, back in October of 2019. And it's called For Better or Worse, For Better or Worse, uh, 30 for 30, the Dennis Rodman documentary. And, you know, you could stream that probably anywhere. If you're having a difficult time finding it, you could look it up on YouTube. It's only like $2 and some change, you know, if you wanted to purchase it, you know, and you could just watch it on your phone probably like an hour and a half video um, but it's really good I think it's a solid piece of artwork man I just like the way that they shot it I like the music that they put in it I like you know the narration Jamie Foxx narrates it. Um, it, it it was just really a good a good documentary in my opinion you know I, I really suggest you highly check it out and if you're not too familiar with Dennis Rodman as a person or the way that he grew up you know I don't know for some of you that like psychology and stuff you know you can kind of understand why he maybe turned into what he turned into, you know, why he started doing what he was doing. If you just understand the psychology of him. Um, but yeah, go check that out and, uh, you know, review it for yourself and see, you know, let me know if you like it or not. Maybe you comment on video and say, yo, yo, yeah, I've seen that video and, you know, that, you know, and see if you like it or not. But really, today's episode, uh, I'm going to be doing a, a different style of painting. Um, for those of you that don't know about Dennis Rodman growing up, uh, he was very awkward and introverted. You know, had a tough time fitting in, very shy, very quiet, didn't talk much, um, and pretty much a loner. You know, he, he had a tough time fitting in, you know, didn't really have many friends, um, and sometimes that he would do things for attention. Like I believe they said he stole some watches. He was like an airport janitor or something like that. And he stole some watches and he just gave watches out to people in school just so that they would like him. Like he didn't even care. He didn't really want the watches, but he just thought it would help. You know, he just wanted to make people happy. It's really what I took from it. He just really wanted to make people happy. And even like when he got into the NBA, you know, they say he was just, he was very young and innocent. You could tell he was shy. He was quiet, very much introverted, you know, wasn't a drinker, wasn't even a partier yet, you know, and then, you know, something happened, you know, he went through a lot of success early on and he developed a family along with his Detroit Pistons teammates at the time. And he never had a father figure growing up. So he was coached by his coach, Chuck Daly, who he looked at as a father figure. You know, and this was like his first team in the NBA. And this is his first like very much structured environment, you know, with a teammate that he considered to be brothers, you know, like he considered to be family and his coach was his dad. You know, it's kind of how it was. And then, you know, after they had their successes and stuff like that, people start going their own different ways. He didn't understand that a team eventually is going to break up. You know, all good things must come to an end at some point. And I don't think he really understood that. And. As a result, he kind of started to spiral. They got rid of the coach, you know, and then he started to be rebellious. He started to be, you know, not really buying into the, what they were trying to do there. And you could just tell he was disgruntled. He had some off the off the uh, court issues, you know, his his uh, the mother of his daughter, stuff like that wasn't allowing him to see his daughter. So he just felt like everybody was leaving him during this period of times. So he turned to drinking, you know, and became more rebellious. And he had a, what was considered to be like a suicidal moment, you know, in his car, basically. He was in a truck, in his truck outside the arena, I believe it was, and he had a shotgun. And, you know, I think he drank heavily that night, and he said he turned the radio on, and he eventually fell asleep, like just holding the gun. 
And then I think the cops woke him up, basically, and they were kind of like startled, like, you know, what are you doing? And everyone thought that Dennis Rodman was going to kill himself. And I believe that they, they said in the documentary that they maybe found him without a sock and without a shoe on, you know, which is an indication that he was possibly going to kill himself, you know, kind of similar to the way Kurt Cobain did. So, you know, as a result, you know, he ended up going, they ended up trading him, I believe. He went to the Spurs, and that's when he changed his look up. And I think I heard him explain this many years ago. I don't think he explained it in the documentary, and this is kind of what I'm trying to get out. Sorry, it's taking really long for me to explain it all. Um, but, you know, the painting that I'm about to do is kind of like an indication of what I'm trying to explain, is that he explained many years ago that it was almost like the old him needed to die. You know, like almost like that experience of him considering to kill himself and him falling asleep and waking up. And maybe something had clicked in him to where it was just like this old this old persona, this old me needs to die. And as a result, the new Dennis Rodman, you know, blossoms, basically. Shows up with tattoos, puts on some muscle, dyes his hair, you know, starts acting rebellious, you know, and basically becomes, you know, art on the court, you know, and he's doing things that are off the wall and nutty and it's, it's creating more attention. He's almost like a rock star on the court. Like I said in my previous video, it was kind of unheard of, the stuff that he was doing in the 90s. Like, people were just like, whoa, you know, and in the 90s, that's when, like, MTV and, you know, rock bands, rap groups and things like that were all just, like, huge. And then, and then he ends up dating Madonna and all these celebrities and stuff and the more attention he got it just seemed like it honestly I feel like from a marketing standpoint it helped it helped him a lot tremendously he I think he made more money he got more attention it created more opportunities you know for him to do off the court type stuff act in movies I think he had his own tv show it was called Rodman's World it was kind of like a real world of Dennis Rodman type of deal um so he was just doing so many things and partying and and still kicking ass on the court you know he was still doing his thing and you know so that's basically what i'm trying to do today uh with the painting that i got and i'll go ahead and show you guys that okay so here's what i drew out and you know there's a picture of dennis rodman and i'll go ahead and show you the uh, the original picture put that up right now So yeah, seeing that picture, you know, just kind of is going to inspire this painting that I'm about to do. Uh, as you can see, he's got his finger to his head like he's about to pull the trigger, you know, which I was explaining, you know, earlier in the in the uh, in the documentary, you know, or just in the story of Dennis Rodman's life. If you're unfamiliar with it, you know, um, basically that he was he was found with like a shotgun, like in his pickup truck, you know, uh, by police and stuff like that. I think the next day. Um, I think he was, had a little bit too much to drink and I think he contemplated suicide um, but really is more of a symbolic ending of the old Dennis Rodman to the new Dennis Rodman in my opinion so that's what this painting is going to be about basically and you're going to see and I'm going to go ahead and break it down for you guys right now and I'll give you just periodic updates you know I probably won't speak too much you know and just just go ahead and show you what I got you know in small glimpses but uh, basically, you know, I'm planning on like just kind of doing like a cut down the middle and have the old Dennis Rodman on this side versus the new Dennis Rodman. You know, the clean cut, you know, non-dyed hair Dennis Rodman and the new Dennis Rodman. And you're going to just see the, uh, the creative spin that I put on it. Um, it's going to be like he's pulling the trigger. And you just 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 bear with me. It's going to be dope. I think it's going to be real dope. I've been thinking about this one for a little bit now. So uh, just uh, go ahead and stay tuned. Okay, guys. So there it is. The end result. Um, I've had this vision in mind uh, for a while now, and I've been really wanting to put this one down on canvas uh, for the longest time. I've always thought about doing this uh, just because I just thought it was pretty cool. Just, 
you know, just to show the symbolism that, you know, the change that Dennis Rodman made, basically, he's like it's the symbolic change that he killed the old Dennis Rodman in order for the new Dennis Rodman to thrive. And as you can see, it's like one side is is he's his old self with no color, no nothing. And it's almost like he's pulling the trigger to have this explosion of just color and paint and stuff like that, just mixed all wild and all over the place, you know. And uh, I really enjoyed doing this one. This one was a lot of fun. And I really like it, personally. I really like the way that it turned out. Yeah, so as I was saying, I really enjoyed making this one. This one was, uh, you know, just the right side of, of painting uh, Dennis Rodman. Um, the, the wild side with the paint all over and sp splattered all over the place. You know, that's fun because it felt like it was a little bit more abstract, you know, and it wasn't like painting him himself is a lot of detail. Like painting portraits anytime takes me a long time. It takes me a while just to, to get the details right. You know, you sketch it out first and then you got to paint it, make it look legit, you know, make it look good. Um, but I would like to actually start doing some more abstract art you know, and this was just kind of maybe a little bit of a taste. I've never really done so much abstract art, but just to kind of just let your, your movements just do whatever you want to do, you know, and just kind of just, just see how it goes, you know, just mixing different paints and making different things and, and, you know, maybe let people just speculate a little bit as to what it is that you were trying to create or, you know, whatever was on my, my, my mood or my mind or whatever, and not to make it so, so distinct you know um not to make it so detailed now i'm gonna do a lot of detailed stuff i definitely got a lot of plans to do some detailed stuff like like this uh dennis rodman painting that you just saw but it was just especially fun just to slap some paint around and uh you know there's there's definitely different creative ways to do that all different types of ways i mean there's no there's no uh, set blueprint on how to do art. So if you're thinking out there, oh, well, you know, I wish I could paint something like you. I'm like, it doesn't have to be like mine. Like, it, you can do whatever you want to do. Just take some paint. Just do whatever you feel, you know. Um, this one, uh, for example, though, this, this Rodman painting, you may think, like, well, how did you maybe do it? And, uh, you know, for, if you're a fellow artist out there and you want to give it a try, but I use a toothbrush, you know. And I don't know, I just thought about it one day when I was doing, um, I, did, I had I painted like a, like a starry night for, for my, for my friend Dylan one night and his, uh, his wife, you know, and I, they, basically it was just a painting of them underneath the stars, you know, them in a black silhouette and in front of a, a tent, you know, and like a, almost like a galaxy type of night. And really I was thinking like how could I do this you know cleanly to just sprinkle some stars on there you know and if I was to use a paintbrush and just dab each individual thing it would take forever so I really just had to think about it and just use a toothbrush you know maybe put some, you know if you're painting stars for example you just spritz it so that's just it I took a assortment of different colors with the Dennis Rodman painting and just kind of rubbed it on my plate and you know mix it around make sure it's wet a little bit too because you want it to kind of really you know spritz and i just kind of just did this over and since i'm in a storage unit i don't own this place I, don't, I wasn't trying to make a mess so i actually had a raincoat in the back of my uh in my trunk and you know i went ahead and just laid i don't know if you guys can see you know, but, you know, just to give you an idea, that's probably not a great look at it, but, uh, you know, it kind of made a whole bunch of different colors, and God, the light is so bright in here, and then it's also kind of not, like, I'm sorry, just, just dealing with an art studio, you know, art studio problems. Um, but just just to say something like that, you know, I think about making clothes like that too, man. Maybe do a black shirt and just spritz some paint all over it, make it kind of look wild, maybe make some stars on it. I think that'd be pretty cool. So maybe, 
And also, another thing you can do, they sell this at like Walmart for like two bucks. You know, um, I broke the other one. I brought two of them, but I broke the other one. I don't know, it's cheap. But that's all you need it for. If you're just looking to just put some paint in there. I did it for the bloodshot, basically. That's spritzing out that way. And at first it came out a little bit too much. I think I put too much. I, I just take some red paint. Now, if you want to make your, your blood look real realistic, you mix, you mix your blood. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> to mix your blood, you probably take a little bit of black paint and a little bit of uh, red. And I didn't do that for this painting. I didn't. I, I guess I just kind of wanted the colors to pop a little bit more. I figured the black would look, would kind of dull out a lot of the other colors. And it kind of did a little bit too. You have to look at it really close. Like I don't think the video and a, and a picture really does, does it really justice. But as I was saying, if you really want to make blood with this, you know, you just put some, to make realistic looking blood, you know, you put some black and then you mix some red. You'll know the, the right amount. You know what blood consistently see looks like and what, it, you know, how it looks. So we we'll just give you guys an idea, you know, if, if you were to do something like that. Because I was thinking to myself, you know how like, Maybe, you know, I've never seen anybody get murdered or nothing in front of me, but only in movies. And it just seems like they spritz and it kind of just spritzes out, you know, and it's kind of how the look that I was going for. And you just got to, you know, water it down a little bit, the paint, just to get it to, you know, to actually squirt. And, and I like damn near spilled like the bottle. I was trying to hold it sideways by his head to spritz it. And it's like, damn, it's like, it kind of like leaked out. And I was like, oh, shit. So it was just kind of all over the place. But you just kind of make do. And yeah, I ended up able to, to make it look somewhat better. But I think I should have practiced, you know, probably should have practiced on something else. You know, like maybe just took some white paper and just went, you know, just to see what it was going to do. I didn't do that. I just kind of winged it. <laughs> you know, sometimes... But hey, I think the painting still came out just fine. But just to give you guys an idea, if you're a fellow artist out there and, and you want to have that idea to do, you know, try one of these, get your toothbrush, get real creative. I mean, there's a lot of different things you can use other than a paintbrush to, to do stuff. And even with the toothbrush, you know, after I had the painting on the ground on top of, on top of uh, this, basically, and... I also covered it with some 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 uh, some white paper. You know, I covered up the Dennis Rodman parts because I don't want him to get covered in, you know, all the extra paint. You know, I don't want the uh, what's it? I guess it would be the left side of the painting or my right, whatever. I don't know the left side, the, the plain side where he's old Dennis Rodman. I don't want that to get covered in all different paint. You know, I wanted that to be pretty plain and to keep him clean cut on that side you know because that's what i was going for so you have to cover it and i just i mean i only have printer paper um probably bags or whatever maybe some masking tape or whatever uh, you could use you know to just cover that you know and and while i was doing that you know i, I covered it and i put paint on the toothbrush wet it a little bit and just kind of started to flick it you know like to really fling it and let it just kind of just do different splats of different color paints and it was a mess I, I wish I could have showed you guys that process my hands are clean now but I just had <laughs> I had paint all over them and it's like I only had I'm on the third floor of my storage unit too so it's like I used uh, the paper towels and stuff from from their uh from their from the bathroom downstairs and you know i didn't have enough of them and i'm like oh I'm like god damn it and i have a water cup to try to keep rinsing the brush because as you're starting to mix paints like it starts to get all mucky you know it starts to get all of a bad color so it's like to keep mixing it it's like normally if i had if i had my own spot you know i'd probably uh just you know hang out by the kitchen sink and just you know rinse it rinse it out you know keep rinsing it changing the water cup just to get a more you know better so you don't have to keep mixing it in tainted water basically but i did it anyway it was whatever it still worked you know i was able to make it look good so i mean i'm proud of that 
Um, but yeah, that's just a little bit about uh, how I did this painting, just to give you guys some ideas. And, you know, I guess we should just wrap this shit up and let me go ahead and show you guys that one painting. And then plus maybe I'll throw in another painting as well as a bonus for you guys being so patient. So let me go ahead and do that right now. Okay, guys. So if you hadn't seen my uh, first episode of Dennis Rodman of this two-part series, you know, that's the first one that I made. And uh, this is actually the very first one that I made this this Dennis Rodman's back, you know, I believe this was from the 96 finals, I want to say, when they played against Utah. He wore that hairstyle. I always just remembered it as a kid. And uh, he also did wrestling, too, back then. And I remember, I think that's where I, you know, really started to gravitate towards him is that I saw him on wrestling. I used to, like, watch wrestling as a kid. I don't really watch that stuff no more. But, you know, as a kid, I think a lot of, you know, boys in general just kind of grow up maybe just watch some wrestling and stuff. I saw him with Hulk Hogan and he was wearing NWO shirts and stuff. And I remember he was rocking that hairstyle. I just thought it was cool. And he was doing that like during the NBA finals. Like I think he wrestled in a match and then he ended up showing up to a basketball game and playing basketball. And everyone was saying how he was such a big distraction and stuff to the team. Didn't matter anyway. They beat the Utah Jazz and went on to win, I think at that time, it was the fifth NBA championship for the Chicago organization, and that would have probably been Rodman's fourth. Um, and then that, the, the following year, they went on to beat the Jazz again, and he got his fifth, and the Bulls got their sixth. You know, Michael Jordan got his six championships. So just a little four-year information in case you guys don't know. But, uh, you know, there it is, the uh, the finished... Dennis Rodman collection and God I would do a lot more you know I, I think there's so many different paintings that I may you know do of him in the future just because he's got such a colorful look with the different hairstyles that he has and just the wild nature that he is like, there's so many other creative ideas that came across to my mind that I could possibly do I just don't feel like doing them right now you know I mean I, I, I after a while you get tired of painting you know Dennis Rodman like I don't want to keep being painting Dennis Rodman all the time I'll probably come back to it in the future um but uh you know I just want to move towards something else you know if, if you know you guys haven't probably seen my other paintings but I did like multiple paintings of Tupac and stuff and then after a while you just get tired of painting the same person I mean I'm not obsessed I like these people so I'm showing respect and I'm paying homage but I don't want to keep painting them obviously it's just you know, something cool to do. Um, and let me just throw in my bonus picture. This is what I'm talking about. This is the bonus for you guys being so patient and just listen to me ramble on in my videos. But uh, this is the air up there, you know, and, I, and I'm not even going to discuss it. You know what? If you know what I'm talking about, the air up there, then, then you're cool. And if you don't, you know, shit, go... I don't know. Figure it out. Figure it out. But if you know what I'm talking about, that's the air up there, man. That's that Jimmy Dolan shake and bake. That's that Jimmy Dolan shake and bake right there. Okay, so I just showed you guys my Dennis Rodman collection. I was also threw in a bonus of the air up there as well, just to show you another painting that I had worked on. You know, I don't videotape everything that I do as far as paintings go. And honestly, like doing this video stuff, it's kind of a distraction. I don't even know how I'm, how to do them correctly, I guess. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I'm just, just winging it and just kind of just pressing play and just showing you guys what I show you guys. Um, but to keep stopping, starting, you know, and worrying about it. Listen, I just want to do the art sometimes. You know, it ain't about that. I'm just giving you guys a glimpse of what I'm doing. And if you like it, cool. If not, then that's okay, too. You just watch somebody else. Um... But if, you know, um, you know, so yeah, so thanks for watching. If you did watch uh, part two of this, you know, painting Dennis Rodman in my storage unit, AKA my art studio. And if you, if you know that there's a part two, then do the math, there must be a part one. So if you ain't seen part one, go watch part one or do whatever the heck you want to do. You ain't got to watch part one if you don't want to. But, um, you know, so, 
just hope I captured Dennis Rodman. Just just pay a little homage to him. And like I said, if you don't know much about Dennis Rodman, I say strongly suggest go check out his 30 for 30 documentary. Uh, once again, I'll say is for better or worse, it was on ESPN back in October of 2019. Um, I'll go ahead and repeat it. You can find, you can stream it somewhere, I'm sure. You can find it for free somewhere, for sure. Uh, might even be replaying on TV. I don't have a TV, but if you don't have a TV and you're like myself and you got a phone, then you could always pull it up on YouTube. It's only like $2 and some change. Um, and once you own it, you own it. So, you know, uh, definitely go check that out. Uh, it's a great piece of art, great documentary. I love documentaries. Uh, it's always a good insight to really how people are and then also how people feel about them. I think it's really cool. And uh, so shout outs to Dennis Rodman. Yeah, you know, shout outs to you, man, for real. I'd like to meet you sometime, have a drink. That'd be cool. Uh, I don't want an autograph. I don't want a picture or nothing, but it'd be pretty cool to just meet him, shake his hand. Maybe just have a couple shots, drink at the bar, and just bullshit a little bit. And just uh, say adios. But, uh, so, alright. So, if you, alright, so, what was I going to say? I'm just drawing blanks right now. I guess I'm just going to wrap this up and just stop rambling on. So, if you like sweet art, just be on the lookout. And stay watching, stay tuned, and keep watching Sugar Shane's Sweet Life for the sweet art. For the sweet art. And once again, thanks for watching. Catch y'all in the next episode.